This is an art attack? This is an art attack? This is Art Attack! <laughs> Don't worry, it's only me. Welcome to Art Attack. Hey, how'd you make your bedroom look like an Indiana Jones film set? Well, you don't need one of these. You don't need one of these. And you certainly don't need one of these. What you need is an ancient stone frieze. Come and have a look at this. Cut a rectangle of stiff card from a cardboard box. Now, this measures about 20 by 70 centimetres, but you can make it as big or as small as you like. Then decide what writing you're going to put onto your frieze. Now, you could put your initials, or you could put your full name, but I find most of those ancient stone friezes have dates on, especially in Roman numerals. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to write 1993 in Roman numerals. You could put your birth date on, or even your telephone number. When you've done your writing, take some strips of masking tape and just very roughly twist the masking tape with the sticky bit on the outside. Twist the whole of the tape like that. The idea being you build up your figures into a 3D relief just by sticking the masking tape over the figures and you don't have to be neat about this and if you haven't got any masking tape you could always just glue on some string or stick on some plasticine and when you've gone over the whole of the frieze you will have something that looks like that look at that and that is perfect because all the letters are now standing up from the board it's a bit bald though because i find those ancient stone friezes tended to be a little bit ornate so decorate it with just pieces of scrap board and paper and i'll show you what i've got on here I've stuck on, just glued on really, some string, thick string, and then I've cut off a toothpaste box, cut it up so it's a width way, stuck them on. And this is mineral water bottle, cut that in half. And here is a chocolate box. They're always good for the top of your freeze. And look at this, down here, I found this old doll's head, so I've cut the face off and I've just stuck that on as well. So when you've stuck all your bits on, anything you like, oh, and the, the idea is to create a design that surrounds your letters or your numerals, and so that it sticks out from the board. And when you've done that, very important, you just lay on lengths of loo roll or tissue paper. That's it, just laying them on, cover the whole of the freeze, and then mix some PVA glue with water, about equal parts, and this is the good bit. Just slop on the glue onto your loo paper. Uh, just slopping it on. And what happens is the glue disintegrates the tissue paper and just sticks it to the backing card. And with your brush, look at that, if you just press in, looking for the shape of your freeze. And when you've done that, it takes a bit of time to do, when you've done that, you'll have something that looks like this. And while it's still wet, very important, you pour on some sand. Now it has to be wet, the glue, so that the sand will stick to it. And if some of it has dried, then just dab on some more glue and wet it again. I'm just going to chuck this on to show you how it's done. Just sprinkle the sand all over your freeze, like that, and then Leave it to stand for no more than two minutes. It shouldn't dry out, otherwise the sand will soak up all the glue and the whole thing will fall apart. And after two minutes, if you shake off the excess sand, you have something that looks like that. Look at that. An ancient stone frieze. And it looks good just as it is. Or... You could make a couple of them and use them to jazz up your bedroom door. And I've even made some corrugated cardboard columns here. I've painted on some PVA glue on the cardboard, sprinkled it with sand, and even made some strips of card into decoration. And you just stick them up around your bedroom door and turn your room into an Indiana Jones 
bedroom of doom. Oh, that is nice. Hello, it's me, the head. Stick objects onto card, cover them with toilet roll, coat them with PVA glue and finally with sand and you can make your own ancient Roman frieze. Hey, I know another way to make an ancient Roman frieze. Pull off his toga! <laughs> Very clever indeed is that. Now don't you go messing around with milk bottles. Use their tops instead. Wash them and stick them down. Hey, here's my milk bottle top masterpiece. <coughs> it's called Milk Bottle. <laughs> Have you ever noticed when you're looking down on something, it looks wider at the top than it does at the bottom? For example, from where you're looking, this pad looks wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And this is a good tip to remember when drawing cartoons. In fact, think of it in terms of triangles. Try this yourself. Take a pencil and draw a very rough upside down triangle on a piece of paper. Now it doesn't have to be neat or perfect because this is just a guide. Then take a pen and inside the triangle draw a body. Now this is going to look very strange to start with but just bear with me and you'll see what I'm doing. Put the eyes in there and keep everything inside the triangle. Don't worry, he's smiling now. It's going to look very painful in a minute. Look at this. Arms go in. Body goes in there. Hands, again, keeping it inside the triangle and squeeze those legs in so that the, the whole person looks wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. And it almost looks as if you're looking down on the person. Good effect, that. Now, it even works for things like buildings. Watch this. An upside down triangle, again, very rough as a guide. And of course, you can rub out your guidelines afterwards. But I'll leave them on just to show you. A couple of upside down triangles. And I think I'll draw a 
nice big tall building in here. In fact, a block of flats. So look at that, keeping to the triangle. And these buildings are wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. And we've just established it looks as if you're looking down on the building. Again, I'm just putting the windows in. You notice I'm keeping to that triangular shape there. Just draw them in rough. I love doing cartoons like this. And it looks as if you're flying over the city there. Well, it also works the other way round with a right way up triangle. Again, a very rough guide triangle. And if you thought that person was weird, wait till you see this. I'm going to squeeze that head in the top there. There he is. And then just put the body in. And this is going to look very weird to start with. There it is. Just put his arm in. And his hands. See the way his hands are looking bigger as they come towards you. And then get the legs in there, keeping them inside the triangle, following the shape of the triangle. There he goes. And some feet at the bottom. And it sort of looks as if you're underneath the person looking up. It's a kind of Honey, I shrunk the artist. Try it yourself. Upside down triangles to look down on something and right way up triangles to look up at something. Oh, that's a nice tip, is that? An upside down triangle to look down on something and a right way up triangle to look up at something. So, with a right angled triangle, you must be able to see round corners. <laughs> My name's Erica, this is my t-shirt. First we did a rough design and then I went over it with fabric crayon. Then our teacher ironed it onto our t-shirt and I coloured it in with fabric paint. My name is Lisa, this is my t-shirt. I painted it with fabric paints. Oh, fantastic do-it-yourself t-shirt designs there using fabric paint. Now I've been doing a spot of my own t-shirt design research to see if there's any alternative to using those specialist fabric paints. And this is what I came up with. Here's a fantastic design that I did using red poster paint. Unfortunately, it all came out in the wash. So poster paint's no good. This was a little bit better, ordinary felt-tip pen, but again, the problem was it faded and ran in the wash. This was much better here. Nail varnish using mum's leftovers. Went on well and survived the wash. The only problem with nail varnish is you can't get many different colors unlike acrylic paint. You can get lots of colours, goes on brilliantly and survives the wash. But obviously you don't boil wash any of these. And it was acrylic paint that I used to design my Art Attack t-shirts. And let's face it, they've had a few washes in their time. But the surprise result were these. Permanent markers and gold pen. And if you stick some cardboard inside the t-shirt to stretch it before you do it, it's easier to actually draw onto the cotton. And it also protects the back of the t-shirt and stops the ink going through. And the technique here is just to do lightly flicked lines like that. Not too much ink on, otherwise it will smear. And another good tip is to just draw your design in, in pencil, before you apply the permanent marker. And if you make a mistake, you can just rub it out before committing to the dreaded permanent marker. I actually think they're great things, these, because they survive the wash. Now, obviously, I'll say it again, don't put it on too hot a wash. It's a nice, gentle wash. And you may find that your T-shirt will fade over time, but then it's just simply a case of going over the original lines with your pens again. And there it is. And just do it. Fancy bit of design up the top there. And that's it, finished. So there it is. Permanent markers and gold pen. Definitely get my thumbs up for jazzing up your old T-shirts. Try it yourself, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!